Contend, O Lord, with my contenders. Fight those who fight me. Take up your buckler and shield. Arise in my defense, Lord, my mighty help. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that though in our weakness we fail, we may be revived through the passion of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and his smoldering wick he shall not quench until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth with its crops, who gives breath to its people and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand, informed you, and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement, and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my light, light and my, and my salvation. salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The, the Lord, Lord is my light and my salvation. salvation. When evildoers come at me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies themselves stumble and fall. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war be raged upon me, even then would I trust. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Hail to you, our King, you alone are compassionate with our faults. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. 
Mary took a liter of costly perfumed oil made from genuine aromatic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas the Iscariot, one of his disciples, and the one who would betray him, said, Why was this oil not sold for three hundred days' wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag and used to steal the contributions. So Jesus said, Leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews found out that he was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And the chief priests plotted to kill Lazarus too, because many of the Jews were turning away and believing in Jesus because of him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've now entered into this week of weeks, this holy week, and it is interesting that the Church places before us this episode in our Gospel today from the very first holy week, ah, six days before the Lord's passion and death. Mary, one of his disciples, does something really incredible. She takes a jar of perfumed oil worth more than 300 days' wages. She cracks it open and she pours it all over the Lord's feet. Now, Judas Iscariot being a, a, a money guy, right? He's concerned about how the money is spent. He's concerned because he wants it for himself, but he still realizes a bad business deal when he sees one. And he sees this waste, and he says, what are you doing? This is outrageous. This is wasteful. This is reckless. Why are you, why are you wasting so much on the Lord? Do you catch yourself thinking the same thing? And then do you catch yourself those last words? Why are you wasting so much on the Lord? See, Mary knew, Mary knew who Jesus of Nazareth was. She saw him raise her brother from the dead. She herself experienced his grace and mercy. And she took this very precious amount of oil and put it on him, who was infinitely more precious than that oil. Not because he needed it, but because she needed to give it. She needed to love as wastefully and as recklessly as Jesus had loved her and her family. And inadvertently, well, she didn't know it, she would sort of be foreshadowing the wasteful love that the Lord would give to the entire world by week's end. See, lots of us, myself included, are only willing to give the Lord what makes sense to us. Whether our time, whether our money, whether our hearts. We only want to give so much. And if he asks for more, I don't want to be wasteful. I've got to be prudent. I've got to be measured. I've got to, I've got to look at everything in my life. I've, I've got this to do and this to do and this to do. But Mary is showing us another way as we begin this holy week. Mary, by her own example, is calling us into wasteful discipleship. Discipleship that is willing to take a whole year's worth of wages and just throw it at the feet of Christ. Not because he needs it, but because we need to give. We need to give all that we have. We need to give to the point of, of it hurting. We need to give to the point of laying down our lives, of sacrificing. And I'm not just talking about things that are, are monetary, you know, valuable, but everything that we consider valuable, especially our time. There are so many of us who are generous with so many things, but that private time that we have, we don't give to God. Those moments where we know that God is calling us to prayer, and we say, well, no, I've got to do the dishes, or I've got to do the laundry, 
or no, I've got to get in early to work, or I've got to go do this, I've got to go do that. We're not willing to be wasteful in our love for Him. Those moments when we know He is calling us to Himself, not for His own sake, but for our sake, and calling us into this reckless, wasteful discipleship. But the Master does not ask us of anything that He is not willing to do Himself. And by the end of this week, He will throw out everything He has for us. Not because He has to, but because He's compelled to, but because He wants to, because He loves us. That's what love does. Love exhausts itself. Love is wasteful. Love is superfluous. Love is, is extraordinary. Love goes above and beyond. And that's what you and I are called to do as we enter into this Holy Week. Let's take the time we've been given. Let's take everything that we've been given. And crack it open before the feet of the Lord. Let's waste ourselves on Him. Because this is what is going to bring us happiness. Not the things that we accrue. Not the time or the talent or the treasure that we store for ourselves. But we will, we will be given back everything that we give and more. That's what this week is all about. Let's pray for the grace to have the courage to want to do this and the guts to do it. Hearts that are willing to pour themselves out the way that God pours himself out for us. We can enter the Holy Week the way that Mary entered into this first Holy Week. Then by week's end, we'll have a deeper sense of what's going on and a deeper sense of how to participate in it unto everlasting life. My dear brothers and sisters, in this time of the Lord's Passion, when Christ offered prayers and supplications to his Father with loud cries and tears, let us humbly beseech God that in answer to his Son's reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers also. That the Church, the Bride of Christ, may be more fully cleansed by his blood in this time of his Passion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That through the blood of Christ's cross, all things in the world, may be brought to peace for the sake of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may grant fortitude and patience to all who through sickness or hardship have a share in Christ's passion, especially those who are suffering from the coronavirus and for those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all be led through the Lord's passion and cross to the glory of his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that through the mercy of God they may rest in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Florence Daigle Bradbury, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask, they may obtain by the merits of your Son's passion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here, and may what you have mercifully provided to cancel the judgment we incurred bear for us fruit in eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cordelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim 
this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest and the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Turn your ear towards me in the day when I call, speedily answer me.
Let us pray. Visit your people, O Lord, we pray, and with ever watchful love, look upon the hearts dedicated to you by means of these sacred mysteries, so that under your protection we may keep safe this remedy of eternal salvation by which your mercy we have received, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May your protection, O Lord, we pray, defend the humble and keep ever safe those who trust in your mercy, that they may celebrate the Paschal festivities not only with bodily observance, but above all with purity of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.